Hello, this is Dr. Nancy O'Reilly, and I would like to welcome you to Smart Amazing Conversations with Dr. Nancy, a podcast that takes a look at stories of life and leadership for smart, amazing women and men like you. The most important thing is showing up. Don't think that you have to bring anything. Bring yourself, show up. And, and remain steadfast and be a... If you are in a position of leadership and a position of management, bring women along with you. Supporting women is my passion and my purpose. And talking with other women and men who promote women's leadership is one of my favorite things to do. I've yet to meet a woman who did not know what she really wanted. She was just either right. afraid to ask the questions or she was afraid of what the answers meant. Their stories connect us and help us to understand that the possibilities are endless if we support each other and lift other women up. Trust is created by persistent identity. I show up as myself time and time and time again. And trust is built. It's one conversation at a time. Okay, hello, Uh, Dr. Nancy O'Reilly, and happy to welcome Gloria Felt back to Smart, Amazing Conversations with Dr. Nancy. Gloria and I have become good friends and partners in women's advancements to parity through her foundation and mine. Take the lead. Uh, women and whose mission reflects her life's passion to prepare, develop, inspire, and propel women to take their fair and equal share of leadership positions across all sectors by 2025 with breakthrough training, mentoring, and through leadership. Gloria is an acclaimed expert on women, power, and leadership with frontline leadership experience, a best-selling author, and an in-demand keynote speaker. She is the best-selling author of five books, including No Excuses, Nine Ways Women Can Change How We Think About Power, and her newest book, Intentioning, Sex, Power, Pandemics, and How Women Will Take the Lead, which is now available for pre-sale in bookstores by September 28th, 2021. She is formerly, formerly the president and CEO of the world's largest reproductive health and advocacy organization, Planned Parenthood. Federation of America. She was named by Vanity Fair, one of America's top 200 women's leaders, legends, and trailblazers. Glamour, and also Glamour's Woman of the Year, and more awards than we really have time to talk about. She teaches women power and leadership at Arizona State University, and has been widely, widely quoted everywhere. Her own podcast is called Power to You. So I'm so glad to welcome you back. Uh, you just said you were busy, busy. Uh, this new book, newest book I know is just going to be, uh, again, just like the others, a trailblazing book and so much, so very needed right now. So welcome back, Gloria. Welcome back to Arizona. I heard you said you just arrived back in Arizona. No, actually, I just arrived back in New York. So that's oh, why I'm so happy. That's, that's yes, why you're like, happy. That's this why is like happy. sending the bird back to the nest. So yeah. I, I'm like so happy. But I got back at midnight last night. So I'm just kind of finding my way around. And I am so happy to be with you. I remember that I think I may have been one of the early uh, guests that you had a long time ago when you first started this podcast, and you have just built it and come so far, and uh, Women Connect for Good has is so amazing, so I'm thrilled to be with you. Well, you were one of my guests on uh, when, uh, Leading Women. You're one of the leading women, and again, this that book is really still selling like gangbusters, and, and we're going to do an audio podcast of that, an uh, audio book of that and then the book on, uh, you're doing your audio book on this one too. So uh, congratulations on the book. I love the title, Intentioning. Now you you created that word, didn't you? I did. I couldn't find exactly the right <laughs> word for what I wanted to say. I, I, and I, I thought so, about that today. <laughs> Yeah, I think she made that word up. So I made, gonna... I, I made it up. I made it up because I want to communicate that I'm not talking about just having an idea in your head. The, the noun intention is a great word, and we use it a lot, but it's a static word. And I wanted to have it a, a verb, an active verb. So intentioning is yeah. an active verb because I want women to know that we're talking about not just ambition, not just thinking about it, not hoping, not wishing, not dreaming. We're talking about, hey, we're doing it. 
Yeah, absolutely. Well, and I, and I love that. I want women to know they have the talent. This is what you also say, and I really like this statement. I want women to know that they have all the talents they need to lead their organization or any organization. And I also want women of all diversities to embrace power of their intention and get the life and career they want. They want. You know, we, we've talked about this so often and, and to take the lead and women connect for good coming together. We, we just... You know, and, and these are tough times. Well, let, let's face it, these are tough times. So I think right now, more than ever, we have to give women uh, such a such a lift and so, so many resources and support than we've ever had to do at this point in our in our history. But all right, this is about you, because I think one of the things that happens, especially with women like yourself, is women will look at you. And, and I know they've said this to me too. Things are so easy for you. And, and they, they have not been, you know, you, you know, I, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, your, your CEO, uh, CEO of Planned Parenthood, because that's a huge topic as well. But, you know, we each had to come from places that put us where we are sitting in these chairs today. So tell me just a little bit about the Gloria that you, that was then and the Gloria that is now. Thank you, Nancy. I, uh, I'll try to make it short because it's, it's a long and winding road, let me just say. I was, uh, I was born and raised in small Texas towns and in an era, but I will say that many of these messages are still there for young women and girls that grow up in these, in these small rural areas. I wasn't given uh, ambitions or intentions for a career of my own or uh, other than being a wife and a mother, and those are good things, uh, but I was to be a support system for everyone else. And, and it took the locus of power outside of me and put it into other people's ideas about who I was and what I should be and what I should do. And as a teenager, partly because my family wasn't exactly what I would call the norm, um, I had two, four immigrant grandparents who spoke with thick accents and people were always asking me, where are they from? Uh, what, you know, blah, blah, blah. You know, so I was having to explain all that. Uh, we were usually the only, or at least one of very few Jewish families in these small towns where people didn't know anything about the culture. My family was loud. The other people were like, well measured. Uh, I, you know, it was like a very my <laughs> grandmother's are like that. I, you know, <laughs> my my grandmother's kitchen didn't smell like my other friends. I, you know, it was like yeah. it was it was it was just I was I knew I was different from the moment I was born. And as a teenager, I wanted nothing more than to be quote normal. So I really let myself get covered up. I, I literally call it. My, in fact, my first leadership intentioning tool in in, in the intentioning book is uncover yourself because I believe great leaders have to know themselves well, and you have to be willing to be yourself and be true to yourself, or people won't follow you, people yeah. Won't, yeah. won't appreciate who you are. But I'm telling you, it was a long and hard road to get there. I married my high school sweetheart, I had three kids by the time I was 20, I drank the Kool-Aid all together, and then I woke up. <laughs> Woo! Hey, this one's as much fun as I thought it was going to be. <laughs> and so I started a college. I started as a community college when I was 20. My youngest was four months old. And I, the lesson that I learned that I feel is a really important one I, I, I want to share with women everywhere and men too, is it doesn't matter where you start in life. Just start. Yeah. Just start. And eventually you'll get someplace that you want to be. And it took me 12 years to finish college. And it, it was, uh, you know, you want the story of how I got involved with Planned Parenthood. That's a whole other one. But, but, but you know, eventually I did uh, build a career for myself. I discovered that although I had planned on being a teacher, which was an okay job for a woman in those days, as you know. Yeah. Uh, yes. <laughs> um, that, yeah. That, mm -hmm. yeah that, but I, I, I discovered that I had what I call the CEO brain. And I'm willing to take almost any level of responsibility in order to be able to bring people together, have a vision and make things happen in the world. Mm -hmm. So so that was a great 30 year career. And then I was planning on writing book after book after book. And as you know, uh, one book led me, uh, no excuses, led me to start Take the Lead, which is how we met. Yeah. And uh, the rest is 
good history. Yeah, yeah. No, I was I was at the uh, when Take the Lead was uh, launched in at the University of Arizona, and I I I I've said this over and over again. I had chills running down my spine and goosebumps because <laughs> I was so excited that maybe finally somebody was going to do something. There were a group of women and 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 a, a, an audience. Uh, an auditorium full of women who are going to do something about women's leadership. And so, uh, you know, from then on, you had me at hello. There's no doubt about it. But, okay, well, let me ask you a question because this is, you know, women support, uh, women connect for good is very, my, the mission is very simple, women supporting other women. And so, of course, supporting Take the Lead was uh, very organic and very appropriate and very, very needed. But who was your support system? Who, what was the, who are the faces and the people who supported Gloria to become who she is today? Because I think oh. that's that's a really important question. I don't think I've ever asked you that. I, I don't think you have either. And again, I'll go back to the beginning. I, actually, my father was the first one. And he always said to me in his way, I don't think he thought of himself as a feminist, but because he would say it, you can do anything your pretty little head desires. Yeah. And, and people laugh when I tell them that, but I will tell you, it's a really important message. And I, it wasn't what I saw my mother doing. It wasn't what I saw other women around me doing, Yeah, but it, and it took until I was an adult for me to be able to hear that message. Right. But finally I realized daddy was right. You, yeah. you really can do anything yeah. your pretty little head desires if you are willing to put in the work and 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 stay with it and be persistent and intention your way to get it done. So I give my father credit for being the first. And, yeah. and I've been fortunate to have others along the way, I would say, who saw more in me than I saw in myself. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think that's a good point, though, is that anyone listening to this should understand that a male or a female can be definitely a supporter and a great mentor for, for girls and women and, and need to understand that. It's going to take us all to get past this, this uh, crunch because of the pandemic. But, uh, okay, let's talk about socialization. We've talk, we can talk about biases, but socialization, we can go back to your socialization and mine because it's much different than it is today. Uh, social media and everything that, and all this instant on time and, and immediacy that girls and boys are experiencing is so different than when you and I were socialized. But socialization is key, how we uh, perceive the world. Perception is everything, you know, and showing up how we show up is based on so many factors, but how we're socialized is key to much of what happens to us in our lives. So talk about the difference between men and women and that socialization. Mm -hmm. Well, what I discovered when I became obsessed with trying to figure out why we had opened doors for women and we had changed laws so that honestly, there, there were no, there, there, there still are plenty of structural impediments, but mostly the legal impediments at least were, were gone. And it, it was, uh, we had seen a woman first, almost everything. So we'd broken through a lot of glass ceilings and broken down many doors. And yet women were, when I started doing this research, women were stuck and had been for 20 years at about 18% of the top leadership positions across every sector. And I seriously became obsessed with trying to figure out why that was. Um, to give you a few other facts that made me wonder, why is this? Women had been earning 57% of the college degrees for a couple of decades, so we were prepared. The business case was very clear that companies with more women in their upper leadership made more money. Yeah, exactly. yeah, and made more money. I mean, is that not good enough to yeah. you know for them to want to have more yeah. women in their leadership? <laughs> yeah. Yes, it was. Yes, it <laughs> you would think, right? Yes, um, women have the power of the purse because we are typically the deciders for the family about what consumer goods and products and services are, are, we're going to spend money on. Absolutely. But we were not using that power. And so I made it my mission then in writing No Excuses and in starting Take the Lead to help women understand better that we have been socialized differently around power than men. And that 
the, the male version of power is what we read in the history books, because, you know, who's written history for most of the ages? Uh, it's it, it, right. It's right. about war. It's about fighting. It's about scarcity that, that there aren't enough resources. So I have to fight you for mine. And I have to if, you, if, I, if there's a pie and you take a piece, there's less for me. So I have to fight you over that crumb. Yeah. Well, the truth is that that's not true at all. Power is an infinite resource. Most of it does reside inside of us. And intelligence is, there's no limit to intelligence. Innovation, there's no limit to innovation. We're pretty smart cookies, us, us uh, human beings, even though we don't always act like it. So, yeah. I, so I wanted to help women shift their thinking, get rid of that old oppressive idea of power over. Instead, understand that power is like a hammer. You can build something with it or you can break something apart. Think about the way of building with that hammer. You can use that hammer to make life better. If you think of it as being the power too, you can make life better for yourself, your family, your community, your country, the world. You can, you can invent, you can create, it's generative. It's not oppressive. And there's, and, and, you know, women are good at making more pies too. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I, don't, I don't bake anymore, but uh, anyway, no, I was speaking, speaking to- You can a, buy pies though. <laughs> I, I, was, I was speaking to a large group of uh, women attorneys and uh, I was talking about my, my last book, Leading Women. And I, I asked the question, how many, how many of you in this room feel, feel powerful? And I asked them to raise their hands. Here's, here's women litigator attorneys. Only two women raised their hands. And here we, you know, and, and this, this again is something that we have to continue to, to help women understand the power to, you know, supporting one another, but the power to, as you, as you said, we've had these talents, these abilities, we came into the world with these and we, we've had, had these all along. You know, here's an example of socialization. I was, uh, <laughs> I have a, I have an equestrian center here in, in California. And my trainer had his 16, his son was having his 16th birthday, his son. So what did he, what was he more concerned about? He was more concerned about his daughters than he was about his sons at this party. And, th and this again is something that we, we see all the time is that little girls have to be protected. Little boys, let them be little boys. Mm -hmm. So, and I think this is something that parents, especially when they give a, a son, a GI Joe and a, or a doll, a, a Barbie doll to a girl, you are socializing them very, very quickly as to what they, what they are and what they should believe about themselves. And I know we should be past that by now, but we're still seeing the media push Women stay young and beautiful. Men stay powerful and strong. So we, we really still have some work to do. And and as, as I said, Gloria, you know, you know, we we've got we've got to get this stuff figured out. But uh, anyway, socialization is key. So parents need to understand from the time they start socializing their boys and their daughters and their sons, it's going to impact them how they're going to behave with the power to in their lives. So, all right, well, that's wonderful. Okay. What's the difference between ambition and intention? I know we were talking about that a bit because I think you have to have, you have to have both, don't you? You do have to have both, but they do serve somewhat different functions for us. And this is how I realized that, um, well, first of all, I should say that when I did my research for around women's relationship with power, I found that very often the research said women had less ambition than men. And I felt like that was not, that couldn't be true. So I had to really look at, okay, how do we, how do we socialize both and, and, and ambitious women, women who express their ambitions are often not treated well. They're not often not, not given, uh, I would say, encouragement for that ambition. And so it does have to start with ambition. There's no question about it. But the way I look at it is that ambition is what you want, you hope, you desire, you wish, you're thinking that you would like to have it happen. Mm -hmm. It's the fuel that, that intention can take and make it actually happen. In my book, I talk about the VCA method of intention, of intentioning. And that is, first you have to have the vision. So that's kind of where the ambition comes in. It's, it's where you get the vision for what you want to do. Secondly, you have to have the courage to believe that you can do it. And thirdly, you know, you gotta just put one foot in front of the other, in front of the other, in front of the other. You gotta take action. 
You have to do it. So vision, courage, action, VCA. And sometimes you have to take the action first. Sometimes you don't get the courage until yeah. you put one foot in front of the other and 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 take that action. Yeah. So to me, that's the difference between ambition and intention. Ambition is I hope, I wish, I want. Intention is heck yes, I'm doing it. I yeah. see it already. Yeah. It's happening. I'll be honest. There's been times in my life I've faked it. I faked it till I made it. And you know, there you go. I, that's a good strategy. And, and you know what? I, they'll never. They never know what's what's going on. They never know if that was the actual plan or not. You just pretend like it was. But that's uh, right. Yeah. No. No. I, I I love that. I love the VCA. I love, it's like a cheer. VCA. Like <laughs> okay. So. All right. So you came out of, you came, you know, you, you've talked to me several times about not working. I don't like the word retirement. You know, I just don't like it. Like reinvention. We don't, we don't understand that word. We don't don't understand that word. So we don't, we don't, I don't use it, but uh, uh, you know, take the lead. How is it different? And and it's, it's a wonderful program. The cohorts, it's it's a wonderful, absolutely wonderful training program, but how is it different than other leadership programs? When well, you've seen you've seen the magic, Nancy. You've seen the magic of yeah. of those cohorts of our fifty women can change the world programs, yeah. and th- that's just one of the programs that we have because we also provide online courses. We we do training for companies. We do uh, we, we will go wherever we're asked, frankly, to be able to deliver the message and do as much of this kind of training, coaching, mentoring, role models, and thought leadership as we possibly can. But our most impactful program combines all of those. And it is the one you're referring to, the 50 Women Can Change the World program. And what is very different about that one is, first of all, we do first start by dealing with women's relationship with power and helping women to transform how they're thinking about it. Secondly, we give them very concrete leadership skills and tools so that they're introspective. They do get to know themselves better. They also learn the value of doing things that your mom told you not to do, like controversy and conflict and you got to learn how to do those in a positive way but you'll never get anywhere if you if you back off from controversy chaos and conflict so we we, we talk about those things and we also uh, have a set of the power tools that are about how you become change leaders and those different buckets of of tools translate also into the nine in leadership intentioning tools in the book intentioning so it's all about know yourself it's about uh, change how you're thinking about power it's about understanding why leading like a woman is a good thing. Uh, Mm -hmm. It's about having the leadership tools and skills to be able to thrive in the world as it is while you're changing it. And, um, And then the secret sauce is putting it together with cohort building because we, we women need each other. We need each other. Yeah, again, it's about socialization. You asked me that question at the beginning, and it, it's a thread that goes through everything, yeah. which is that yeah. boys learn at an early age to form these networks, yeah. and they support each other. And you've seen yeah. it. How many times have you seen a man get fired for incompetence, and two days later, he's been offered a better job somewhere else? <laughs> I mean, really? Oh, don't it, you see that? No, <laughs> so women, women need to learn those skills of supporting each other, which is what you do so well with your Lift Women Up campaigns. And in fact, I'm going to have your Lift Women Up tips on my intentioning website so that everybody who goes to that site can also get those tools as well as the intentioning tools. And I, um, so I think that the secret sauce really is combining what we learn with a whole process of intentionally forming cohorts of support for one another. Mm -hmm. And in fact, in our programs, we now ask the cohorts to make a plan collectively, as well as the women. The women make a plan for themselves individually, but we ask the cohorts now to make a plan collectively just and it's it's important that they do it as an exercise. It's not so important exactly what the plan is. Yeah. It's the practice yeah. of you're going to be stronger and better together and yeah. have more impact together. As you said, I, I've personally seen the the, uh, the amazing transformation that has occur- that occurs with women when they absolutely look around the room and they're with their with women that are like-minded women who are supporting them and vice versa. Mm-hmm. And, and the joy and the, and the happiness that they feel is that I, I remember one, one woman said she's, uh, this is one of the, uh, 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 one of the authors, uh, 
you know, media, this is a media group, uh, social, the whole social media group. And, and she said, I just don't feel alone anymore. I feel like I've got somebody watching my back now that I've never had. And I've got people I can refer to and vice versa. And, and it were truly, it was, it was so joyful, but I, th I think that was, the, for me, that is the secret sauce is when you see women for the first time, many of them saying, you know, I never really realized that if I, if there's plenty of work out there and there's things that I can do, but there's women that can do other things that we can share in those, in, in those referrals and those, those uh, projects and, and just lift each other up each and every day. And, and it just makes all the difference in the world. There's no doubt about it. So, you know, <laughs> I, I love it. I love that. And, and you and I know that when we see it over and over again, we know it's the right thing to do. Okay. Well, and we know about diversity. We've talked about diversity and we know that more than any ways, but, than anything that, especially in the training, that the more the diverse the population that comes together, the more rich and valuable the, out, the experience and the outcome is. Talk a little bit about that. We know that women ourselves are quite diverse. And I think we need to start there and not assume that every woman is like every other woman yeah. and, and that, you know, we need to be able to, to address the needs of, of women of various different ethnicities, uh, races, religions, whatever it might be, uh, sexual orientations, wh wh whatever, whatever it might be. So that, that's where I would start. But I think that in a very profound way, if we have not after all the things that happened in this past year, if we have not begun to understand how racism and sexism are joined at the head, and we have to intertwine them in our solutions to the, the problems and make sure that we're seeking racial and gender equality together, and, and at the same, and that they really are not even two sides of the same coin, they are the same coin. They are the same coin. And when you're talking about the value of diversity, that is that is the key issue. And 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 instead of seeing ourselves as these siloed different identities, to understand how our different identities intersect. Uh, I told you a little bit about how my identity had affected me as a child. Uh, everybody has something. Everybody has something you know yeah, that they have to yeah. deal with. And and if once we can really share those with each other, then we begin to understand more about each other. We are able to have more empathy for each other. And we're able to then, I think, work together better to a common end. There is nothing more wonderful to me than having a great amount of diversity around any table. If you're trying to solve a problem, yeah. if you need to innovate, if a company is, is falling behind and wants to figure out how to do a better job, they need to have a very diverse leadership team. They need to be listening. They need to hear and understand the perspectives of a variety of different people. That's where the juice is in this world. I mean, that's where the, that's where the richness is in this world. So, so we're really missing the boat if we're not valuing diversity, and I just see it as just a, uh, not only a positive, but a necessary thing for any of us, and in particular, for us as women, to be very cognizant of how racial and gender justice need to go forward together. Well, I wish we had so much more time, but I, I do want to end with this uh, this last piece, because I think it's so important. You know, this pandemic has has really changed a lot of what we were doing with Take the Lead uh, as far as women's advancement and women's leadership. But now we're dealing with women's bodies. I mean, it's it's like there really are some unbelievable challenges out there right now for women, especially in the workforce. And now as far as the ownership of, of women's, their own bodies. So uh, just briefly, and I know we could go on for hours on this one alone because of what's happened in the workplace, but what are some of the, the some of the positives that we can offer for people right now, because I think that's what we need. We need positives. We need to lift people and women up and say, here's some things we can do to make it better, because we've heard of all the things that aren't making it better. So what can we do to make things better now? 
Yes, uh, I, I say, first of all, pay no attention to the man behind the curtain saying it's all bad and, and, and that you shouldn't be happy because, uh, because, you know, the heck with him. Uh, it, yeah. it, it's really up to us to create our own next reality. And, as, as, uh, it, it, and, and we've all got something to bring to that table. I, one of the points that I make over and over again in intentioning is that this is a time of disruption. And this is a time of rebirth and that those two have a lot in common because when you have this kind of disruption, people have to be willing to open up their minds to new ideas, new thoughts, new ways of dealing with things. And for example, every company now knows people can work in flexible hours and flexible locations. These are things women have been asking for for years and now it's clear to everyone that th- th- those are actually good policies to have. I mean, you can be people can be just as productive and possibly more productive and save you money. You don't have to have as many offices. You don't have to, you know, it's you don't have to invest as much in real estate. So I think new ideas have to come into the system. I, you know, right right now in Congress, they're talking about child care as infrastructure. In my lifetime, I would have never thought that we would be having that conversation. So however it turns out, it's creating new thinking. It's creating new thinking. Now, when that happens, there's going to be a severe pushback because people don't relinquish power easily. And that to me is what's going on with all of the attacks on women's reproductive rights, um, the, the pushback in terms of women in leadership, we just need to, and I shouldn't say just, I'm trying to, one of the things I'm trying to forget doing is to use the word just all the time, because it's not, I want to use just in the sense of justice as opposed to small. Yeah. Uh, it is It is just for every human being to have the opportunity to utilize their highest and best skills and to aim for and achieve their highest and best intentions. And that's truly what I want. And I know that's what you want as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I, and I think, uh, again, this can be also a time, uh, uh, huge opportunities because uh, again, all the changes that are going on in the workplace. And of course, again, with women really taking charge of, and, and owning their bodies, but that this is the time that we can really truly as women step up and add value and, and bring to our corporations and companies and what we're doing, uh, like I said, innovation and, and creation and save money on the bottom line, but make money as well. So, uh, you know, in, in some ways, I, I think the pandemic has been very hard, but in some ways it's been very good for many people because one of the things that we truly know now is relationships are more important than every, everything and supporting one, one another in that, in that process we can do anything when we when we come together and and work together to solve problems. So, this is a great book. You said you didn't have it, so I'll put it up so people can see it. Thank you, thank you so much. Yes, I, I had I had all of the copies of the the advanced copies sent to me in Arizona, and then I didn't oh, bring it with you, me. Oh, no, you ran out. You ran. Just say you ran out. You ran out of books. I just ran out because so many people wanted them. That's right. You got it. Here's the book. It's uh, going to be available uh, September what twenty eighth. Uh, September twenty eighth. It, it's it's on sale. It's it's available for pre sale right this minute. Yeah. And pre sales, as I have learned, are queen. So it's really important to have pre sales, and then we ride into the actual launch on September twenty eighth, and onward from there. Absolutely. Well, I, I know this is going to be a huge success, and, it, and there's so many p- pieces of everything that you've been doing and pulling these pieces together and creating new words, intentioning new words, uh, like you know, brain freeze. Now there's intentioning, but. Uh, <laughs> Gloria, congratulations. Uh, you are the ever ready, ready bunny, always energetic and ready to move forward and, and helping women and men, and boys and girls to live their very best lives. So thank you. Where can they learn more about you? Uh, personally, I know there's lots going on with Take the Lead. Where can they learn more? Right. About you? Yes. Thank you for asking that question. First of all, on social media, I am at Gloria Felt everywhere and it's F-E-L-D-T. Okay, uh, so uh, so then my personal website is GloriaFelt.com and Take the Lead's website is TakeTheLeadWomen.com. 
So you can find out about all of our services. You can find out more about me. You can find out more. And in fact, if you go to GloriaFelt.com, you'll be able to download a free workbook that tracks the exercises in the book Intentioning. So you can actually follow along with it. And that will be an even better guide and coach for you. So I'll put it up one more time. Gloria, congratulations. We'll be talking soon. I know we, on Wednesday we're going to be talking to real leaders uh, because that's what you are and that's what I am. So let's just, let's just wow them on Wednesday. But thank you so much and congratulations and stay in touch. Thanks. Thank you so much, Dr. Nancy. Love you. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Bye. If you enjoy these smart, amazing conversations, please subscribe, rate, and review them on Apple Podcasts. Spotify, Amazon, or wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. And read and enjoy more amazing stories in my books, In This Together, How Successful Women Support Each Other in Work and Life, and Leading Women, 20 Influential Women Share Their Secrets to Leadership, Business, and Life. Thank you for listening.